Hey there, this is Noah. Welcome back to another edition of Sortable Tagless. Uh, so since last time we did a tutorial, I've done a lot of playing around and thought it would be really cool if I could take my tag list that I could filter my results with and instead of having just one list, I thought it would be a lot easier for users to have two. One where users could look at the type of project that I had done work in and then the second thing would be the industries that the project took place in and I thought that would be a much easier way for people to actually get to the data quicker and so I wanted to share with you a quick way to uh, get this going instead of one tag list to have two different lists and then for the sorting to happen with two or three or as many lists as you want it's real easy it's real fun we're gonna do it real quick uh, this builds upon the first tutorial that we did together, which uh, we'll call uh, multi-tag filtering one. And so for this one, basically what we're going to do is look at the end result, which is here. Ooh, la, la, isn't it cool? And then we're going to look at our portfolio chunk, which is just an iteration of the last portfolio chunk. It's really only slightly different. We're going to look at these two template variables. One is called discipline, one is called industry. And we're just going to check those out. And then we're also going to look quickly at one of these portfolio items just to see the document to see how, how you would go about entering the data and the template variables that you might need to make something like this actually work. And then we're going to head over to Coda and we're going to look quickly at our, uh, our jQuery code, which I've actually broken out of the main page and use you know, externally linked now. And we'll just quickly go through that. So uh, without further ado, let's get to our portfolio chunk. Real simple. Um, this time I've named it portfolio one instead of portfolio. For each of my items which happen down here, they're a list item. And inside that list item is a link, and inside the link is a picture, and also um, information where people can click on to go to the actual website. Now you'll notice there are two placeholders for template variables which are split by a hashtag. This is my splitter, and this will come into play later when we get to the JavaScript. Because um, basically what the JavaScript will do is split these two chunks into the two separate lists and the user will be able to click on either of these two template variables and they will be able to uh, sort the list. Um, so that's our portfolio chunk. Our template variables are pretty simple. Um, give them whatever name you want. You just have to make sure that they match what's in the chunk. For me it's discipline. You know, of course, um, the um, spelling is important. In terms of the input options, it's auto tag and yes for allow blank. You'll find that to be much easier when you're uh, entering data. Of course, if it's blank, it won't, it won't show up in the tag list. In the output options, I do um, delimiter and space. And that's for the discipline one for the industry one it is let's see here input options allow blank auto tag and delimiter is blank I'm not sure why I did that <sighs> so let's go look at uh, how one would actually build one of these resources so I have a, a resource and a template which is called portfolio I've attached a bunch of template variables to it. You know, the actual content is blank. Everything lives inside the template variables. You can see that I haven't done any kind of um, uh, form customization to make it simpler for clients. That would, of course, come later, but this is just for me. You know, this is the job info, which will uh, open up in a color box, in a color box thing when the user clicks on the thumbnail. This is a picture that will show up in the color box display. This is the name of the company, which shows up in two places, both the color box title 
and also in the um, the bottom of the little thumbnail this is the URL this is the date that the that the project went live and that helps me sort the stuff in a grid so that I have my most recent projects upper left um, as we scroll down this image is what shows up on the home page and then here's where we get to our tagging and um, you'll notice I've got a nice clean little tag list here when you use the auto tag uh, type when you click on this it just adds it right whoops it just adds it right it adds it right to the list I don't actually want the identity one for this particular project because I didn't do the identity but um, when you have two words or multiple word um, tags, you want to use an underscore to connect them. Otherwise, it will split the tag apart. And then instead of seeing web design as, as one of the choices, it'll say you'll see web and design separate, which is not our intended outcome. So we use underscores for both uh, this tag and this tag. Um, so that's kind of like how one would enter the data into the actual file to build one of these little thumbnails and then the color box display. And we're going to head over to the, the jQuery file now. Most of the work for the jQuery file starts with an unordered list called portfolio list. Inside that list is where the get resources call will populate all of our list items, which are the images with a little visit the site link underneath it. That's where that portfolio chunk that we talked about earlier. Um, what happens is that the jQuery will take that each list item and map all of the classes. It then splits the class names at that hashtag that we talked about earlier into two pieces. The first piece is going to feed down into our discipline list and the second uh, chunk after that split is going to feed the industry list um, through a variety of special sauce and permutations we're going to remove all of the commas which are inside the list and also for all of our multiple word items it'll remove all the underscores so that the user won't be able to see them and then when each of those items is clicked in the list what will happen is that the list will get resorted, and that's what, what's happening down here. And it's not resorted, it's more of uh, the list being refiltered. Um, so that when a user clicks an item, it toggles the class from either active to inactive, the item a class of active, or removes the class entirely. And then it joins all of the items that have been clicked, and it creates an array. Um, called choice and when there's a choice all of the portfolio list is hidden and then only the ones that that are active will be shown and those will fade in at a speed of 400 milliseconds and then there are two variables which do some fun stuff one is called port length the other one is port total port length is a count of all of the portfolio list items which have not been active and then port total is a count of all of the list items and then there's a comparison between the two and if the two are equivalent then portfolio acuteness will fade in and if they're not equivalent and portfolio acuteness is visible it will be hidden and if there isn't a choice there's an else clause which is that if none of none of the list items are active in our unordered list with a, a class of tag list then all of the items below will be shown there are two other functions that come into play down in the bottom one is called distinct list one is reset the distinct list function takes all of the class items parses them and returns an array of unique items and also they're sorted and alphabetized and then the reset function just uh, removes all of the active classes from the tag list and shows all of the portfolio list items. And that's our file. Just to remind you what we're seeing on the page, 
these two are both unordered lists with a class of tag list. This is our unordered list with an ID of portfolio list. And so when we click on this item, the class of active is applied to it. That value um, is mapped. And as we click more and more stuff, um, only the items that share all of the classes with the active items are visible. And then by clicking on reset, we're activating that reset class. And then it shows all the items again. Cool. Hope you enjoyed this. I had fun. Love to talk with you on Twitter, Noah Lerner. And my website is learnerdesign.com. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Hope you had fun.